uh the let's uh move to the uh the today session today i will uh continue to explain about the uh ctc uh the training part and then we will also the, the explain about engram language models and again today's part will not be included in the midterm exam okay so uh, the first uh i will continue the ctc training and the uh we actually didn't explain about the forward and the backward algorithm in CTC. So I will uh the, the explain that part and then completing the CTC training. By the way, CTC training part will be our uh, the coding assignment three. So we will actually carefully uh, providing the sufficient information so that you guys can also pass in this coding assignment. And then the uh, the language model is also, by the way, another uh, the, the part of the coding assignment. Uh, so I will explain about it, but it's mostly engram, uh, and uh, I will explain about the basic uh, the smoothing techniques. And then today is Wednesday, so we will uh, have a, a weekly assignment, uh, so which sounds like a little bit too much uh, for you guys, but this weekly assignment is actually uh, the providing the hint uh, for the, uh, the current coding assignment too. So uh, the this is designed like this. And also the slightly extending the deadline uh, so that you guys can uh, avoid to have a big pressure about it. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move to the, uh, the CTC uh, training part. This is a review of the, the we have uh, uh, the, the, uh, studied last time. Uh, so first loss function is uh, the quite simple. We just using the uh, negative uh, log likelihood, uh, conditional log likelihood, and the as a convention of the uh, neural network training, we just uh, the taking the uh, the minus sign. But other than that, it's very similar to the uh, the EM algorithm, maximum likelihood based approaches. So uh, the uh, maximizing the likelihood would be minimizing the uh, negative likelihood, right? So the problem is the same. Just the convention is different. So I just follow the, con uh, the convention of the neural network. And then uh, the how to solve this one. Uh, now uh, that uh, for CTC, uh, that it's too complex to solve with that are, uh, the EM algorithm. So instead we use a gradient descent uh, and for to de uh, the, uh, the conduct a gradient descent, uh, we actually have to uh, the take the derivative. And that was a kind of main part of the, uh, the last lecture. First, to take a derivative in the parameter, which corresponding to uh, the getting the intermediate representation of the softmax activation, which again, I will explain more uh, the details later uh, the here. So just kind of uh, the, if you are not very familiar with uh, the softmax activation, so um, uh, please understand that this part is more like a, a, a quite basic neural network multi class classification method. So especially this second factor is a very kind of a typical neural network uh, the, uh, uh, the multi class classification part. So it is not very typical, uh, it is not very kind of special for the speech recognition. Actually, any of the multi class uh, classification, uh, the uh, problem is actually uh, the, uh, represented by this kind of a form. But the important part is this uh, the first factor, which we spend a lot of time. Actually, it turns out that this uh, the, the uh, neural network uh, the update is weighted by the posterior uh, of the, the occupation probability. Uh, for each other uh, token. So this other uh, the posterior is actually obtained by uh, the, the, uh, the playing with the uh, the, uh, the tolerance structure. Uh, that was kind of our, uh, the lecture last year, uh, last week, no, the, the Monday. So again, I still kind of want to recap the, uh, the, uh, the to other, other getting this, uh, the, the posterior distribution the important part is similar to the EM algorithm. We also focus on the, uh, the, uh, the gamma uh, function, a uh, forward backward function. And this is also the, uh, the, the, the called occupation probability for 
uh, the the uh, the for for the position of here. Okay, uh, the, the just want do not confuse that the uh, the token is one of the uh, the representation in the position. So in this case, is for example, E happened twice, right? So uh, this is a little bit confusing, but uh, but please kind of uh, uh, the uh, the make sure to understand uh, the difference and so on, uh, which uh, we spent a uh, the couple of uh, the slides in the last time, right? But anyway, the, for now, uh, the, we uh, try to focus on the uh, occupation probability of uh, the, the, this point uh, or a, any point of this part. Uh, but the, let's uh, the focus on one of the points in the tolerance and then try to kind of get the probability uh, of this kind of uh, the, the point. And then the, the, we kind of are, uh, the, uh, prepare the definition. Uh, this uh, the probability is first represented by the uh, 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 some path uh, in the torus. However, we consider all possible uh, the the uh, the, uh, the passes subsequent uh, that goes to this uh, the point. Uh, like for example, uh, the all kind of are uh, the, the passes starting from here to reaching to uh, this uh, the a uh, point uh, which we should consider, okay. And uh, similarly, uh, the uh, the uh, from the point here to end of the point, uh, uh, we it can be represented by several the uh, the the passes, and we also consider all these kind of our passes, and then summation taking the summation of all possible uh, the passes uh, reaching to here and then from here to reaching to the end. Uh, that would become the kind of this occupation probability. I just kind of want to recap. It's a, a kind of uh, the intuitive, right? It's not the easy concept, but intuitive, right? Uh, then uh, the, let's uh, then uh, cook this uh, the equation. Uh, that is the first point uh, of uh, the CTC. Uh, the the, uh, the occupation probabilities are uh, the the, uh, the formulation, and the I actually had a lot of other uh, equations here, but actually all of this kind of process is uh, quite now uh, the 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 the, uh, the familiar uh, with you guys. For example, uh, the yeah first line is a definition, just a defi definition, uh, from here to here, product true, right? Now I believe many people started to, you know, understand this kind of formulation. <laughs> and from here to here, we actually taking the conditional independence assumption. Uh, actually, this conditional independence assumption is uh, not sure it is really uh, valid and so on. So I kind of uh, prepared uh, um, the the. Uh, want to kind of explain it with the um the this torus here. So basically, uh, this means that the, the we ignore the uh, the dependency from t minus one to t plus one. We still have a by the way dependency from t to t plus one, right? Let's say for example, uh, t t is here, t plus one is here. And then t minus one is here. And as you see from the the, uh, the CTC uh, torus, there is a no kind of a route to go from here to uh, the t minus one to t plus one directly, right? If we have a, this kind of a, a, a pass, uh, the, we actually have to consider the, the this dependency, right? t minus one to t plus one is then uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, they had some kind of dependency. But fortunately, uh, the CTC uh, tolerance actually doesn't have uh, the exist this kind of a skip so that we can safely assuming uh, this conditional independence assumption. Does that make sense? Okay.
So now uh, that, that we have this kind of our conditional independence assumption, and finally we use a distributed property to add a, 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 a derive uh, the factorization of the two uh, the uh, the factor. And the, again, I just want to emphasize that you know the, the even you know uh, the, the the speech recognition uh, goes to the neural network. Uh, still, and the end-to-end -end neural network and so on, still this kind of uh, the product through conditional independence assumption and the other kind of tools, to mathematical tools to make the problem tractable is very important. Uh, so please uh, the, the, uh, remember uh, this technique when you try to come up with a new formulation and so on. Okay, and then uh, the first part is actually, uh, there is some difference, but it's quite similar to the forward variable that we have uh, that defined in the HMM cases. But in the HMM cases, actually observation is uh, the, in the kind of argument of the probability. There's some kind of small difference and so, but it actually doesn't have a so much uh, a big difference. Same for the backward observation is usually uh, in the uh, argument part. Uh, but the, the, this is not very difficult to kind of uh, the, the, uh, change the, uh, uh, the structure uh, by using the base theorem and so on. So anyway, the, uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the uh, function term, the summation of the subsequence, and then uh, the having a, uh, the, the, uh, one point here, and this other condition, and also summation of the subsequence from T1, uh, uh, t plus one to t is actually quite similar to the forward backward variable uh, we uh, defined in the HMM cases. Okay, now uh, the, it turns to uh, the, to uh, the solve this uh, the forward uh, the, uh, uh, and the backward variable uh, by using the uh, the computa recursive computation that we uh, the introduced before. So uh, the, by doing that, uh, I will uh, the, again uh, the, the, the explain a little bit about the forward variable. So forward variable, the most important part is the summation over the subsequence uh, the, from the, uh, the beginning to the, uh, the, the point that we are uh, the, the, uh, the, the factorizing uh, with the uh, the, the occupation probability. And uh, we have to deal with this uh, the summation over the sequence, but similarly to, similar to the, uh, the HMM cases, we can actually solve it recursively. And how to solve recursively? The first, we will define the uh, initial point, right? Uh, T equal one at the initial point. And then we kind of uh, the recursively updating the uh, the, the uh, variables and so on. And then actually first uh, short quiz. Yes, the, the question is when t equal one, uh, the, uh, uh, where we uh, the, the start? Uh, the, That is a kind of a question. This is uh, a little bit unique in CTC compared with the uh, HMM. So I just make it that a question. Is the question clear? Okay. One more minute then.
Yeah, many almost all people actually got the, uh, the correct answer. But this is just uh, the, the difference from the HMM. So I just want to uh, the emphasize it. You know, the CTC, uh, it can be starting from either blank or initial character. So the answer is that the, it's, the, the initial part is actually starting from two points. Eh? And then uh, we actually are uh, the, uh, the starting the initial uh, the, the, this uh, the alpha probability uh, with this kind of a two other variables. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, the always uh, the, this part is uh, the blank. So it can be actually blank symbol and the corresponding the time frame. And this Y is, as I mentioned, it's uh, the softmax uh, the function uh, that the neural network produce to uh, providing it a CDC. And then second part is uh, can be a kind of a, a the first character. This also has some kind of variables. It's in this kind of example case, it can be a kind of a token of S. Okay. And all others, U3, uh, the U4, uh, U5, U6, U7, since it cannot be starting. So it's actually uh, the, this part is zero. Okay. So now we kind of set a kind of initial part and then let's go through the kind of recursive way. And then uh, the, 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 now we have a, a one and a two. So let's try to kind of compute this one. And uh, how to compute it? Actually, the, the, to compute this point of the forward variable, uh, please look at the arrow. Only this are, are the uh, arrow. The, the only this the, uh, arrow exists. So this means that the, the this uh, the the, uh, the forward variable can be simply computed by uh, the uh, the product uh, of this value and the uh, the the uh, softmax. Uh, the, the value are uh, here. Um, and we go through this kind of a process for one by one for all kind of a node. And the second case is this point are uh, the two arrows are coming, right? So we actually then uh, consider uh, to add the uh, contribution of uh, this uh, the, the forward probability and this forward probability, and then also other uh, uh, multiplied by the softmax values here. And we can actually continue this kind of process. Alpha 2 U3 actually only has a one arrow. So this is actually also simply written by this one times other the other. Uh, uh, the, the uh, probability here, local probability here, and the last one as well. So this is a, a summary of the second step. Uh, we just, you know, since it is, you know, very simple graph structure and uh, similar to HMM, so similar to HMM, we can actually compute the second step by uh, using the previous uh, the result uh, and then uh, the multiplied by the, uh, the softmax value uh, and so on. And we just continue this process until uh, the small t. So this is very similar to what we have done in the forward uh, the computation. Uh, by the way, uh, this one, uh, as I mentioned, to get this kind of uh, the values, this one, we just, you know, uh, getting the one arrow, one arc, right? And here, we actually have to consider the two arcs so that we have actually the, the summation of the, uh, the, uh, the two arcs uh, in the kind of, uh, uh, to get this uh, the, the, uh, next word variable. But this one, uh, fortunately only one, and this one also fortunately only one. So the contribution to compute this one, uh, this one, this one, this one is one arc, 
two arcs, one arc and one arc. And then the other question uh, that is, uh, short, yeah, can you open it? Whether do we always consider other one or two arcs? This is, uh, I think, yes, no. Not in this cases, you know, if we move to this one or this one or this one, the, the number of arcs to contribute to compute the this uh, the, is uh, the always one or two. That is a question. So the answer is actually no. Uh, there is a one case that can have a, actually more than two arcs. Can someone find where we can have a three arcs? <laughs> yes, this part uh, and also this part as well, right? Yeah, but this is actually maximum. Three is maximum. This is a kind of a structure that you know uh, the the CTC can accept the. Uh, this means that this is the uh, the the keeping the same state, right? And this one is, you know, uh, the, uh, coming from the blank. And this one is uh, coming from the previous token. But of course, uh, in this kind of a token, uh, since uh, this is the conjective uh, token, uh, blank must be kind of inserted, and we cannot have a kind of a jump here. So most of cases actually two or one. But some cases it becomes three, so this is actually the, uh, the unique uh, the structure of CTC. <laughs> so this is actually the uh, the uh, recursive uh, the equation of uh, the CTC. So to get the kind of a alpha, uh, uh, to compute the alpha in the next timestamp, which only requires to consider the uh, the same state. Uh, or a previous talk, uh, the other uh, state a uh, token i i minus one, or sometimes we also consider i minus two, but again depending on the kind of uh, the position, uh, depending on the kind of relationship with token, uh, this can be becomes one uh, only one contribution or two contribution, but anyway this uh, the the uh, uh, the uh, the forward computation is also written as a matrix operation, but the matrix is very very sparse, the similar to HMM. So this is the uh, the forward uh, algorithm, and then uh, we we'll move to the backward algorithm. But the backward algorithm is uh, the similar to the uh, uh, last discussion. It's also quite almost same. <laughs> so I didn't kind of fully uh, explain about it. Eh? But the backward, uh, the interesting part is that now the, uh, there is a kind of condition here. And given we know this, uh, that we are here, the given we know we are here, and this, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, summation over the sequence uh, the, is uh, the, 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 how it looks like. This is a kind of a, a the backward computation and so on. And then, uh, similar to the uh, previous uh, the uh, four other cases, uh, let's start from the uh, end point t equal to t. Then I think the question, uh, short quiz question is also same, I believe. Uh, the, since uh, this is also the, uh, the starting from the, uh, the end of the point, uh, and then recursively, uh, the, uh, the uh, the, the backward computation has happened. So we need to actually set the initialization in the, uh, the end of the other uh, frame. And then the question is, uh, yes, are the multiple choices are all, anyway, the pitch, uh, the, the, uh, the end point, uh, end, end point uh, we should use to start this other uh, the, the recursive. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, cal calculation. Uh, I think it's very similar to the short quiz one, so people are understanding the question.
So the answer is uh, the again similar to the uh, the initial part. Uh, the we have actually two uh, the end point uh, uh, in CTC. So it's you know you guys may feel it's very obvious, but this is actually important architecture in CTC. So I just want to emphasize. Uh, it can be blank or it can be the, the last token. So either of them can be actually the end of the uh, uh, end of the point of this graph. So that's why I kind of uh, make sure to uh, make a quiz uh, for this part. And then uh, the, in the beta, uh, the backward uh, the calculation, we actually initialize this one as one and then all the others are zero. And then taking the kind of similar uh, calculation that we have done before. And then I now I skip the kind of a computation, but similar to the uh, the previous cases, uh, to get the uh, uh, to get the uh, the backward computation, we have to consider the, uh, the in this case actually only two cases, but the if we you know have our uh, the um if we have some point uh, i think i couldn't find it or oh, this one yeah then that we actually have to consider the three arcs and so on so generally uh the similar to the four other uh the com uh, calculation uh the uh the backward uh, calculation also based on the three uh terms but again uh, this uh, can be very kind of sparse Sometimes, uh, almost all the cases, one or two, and in some cases, three, uh, and so on. So uh, this is a kind of a, 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 a backward, backward a, a, a algorithm uh, in, the, uh, in CTC. Uh, with this kind of a forward, backward algorithm, we can actually uh, get the computer the occupation probability here. And then through this uh, the occupation probability, we can move back to the other gradient, the first gradient equation, and then we can actually compute the weighted sum uh, the, the, with respect to the token for the gradient. That corresponding to consider the all kind of our other uh, the trellis uh, in CTC. So if we are not very sure about the CTC, I recommend it to always kind of write the trellis. And then you guys can kind of uh, understand that they, uh, the more details about the CTC uh, the structure. And uh, I kind of uh, put this kind of a lecture here in this timing, uh, rather than kind of uh, explaining about the neural network and so on, because again, I want to kind of emphasize that the algorithm is very similar to the forward backward algorithm. So this is a kind of intention of putting this other uh, CTC other uh, uh, estimation process here. Uh, any question for this CTC training part, including the last lecture? I hope you guys you know uh, the enjoy some similarity and some difference. <laughs> okay, so cool. And actually, during I was also writing this kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the preparing this materials and uh, uh, writing tutorials. I actually came up with a new. <laughs> Uh, two CTCs. So, uh, the, if uh, the, some of you are interested in, maybe uh, that we can work uh, together. Uh, one <laughs> CTC, uh, the possible CTC is actually very similar to HMM. Uh, the two state. Every time we have a two state, left to right two state. Uh, this is actually also uh, the uh, the uh, the probably uh, the. Maybe there's something wrong that I have never implemented. So, but probably this can also perform the speech recognition, I believe. Uh, that because that the the important part is that, that whether we can distinguish the uh, repeated token uh, or not, right? But in this case is you know same token is actually you know goes from one to two and then going back to one. So this means that, that the, if there, these uh, the, uh, two tokens are uh, the uh, repeated token, then the, this number that the, the go back to the one means that the, the, we always have a, a boundary here, right? 
So by using the two H uh, two state uh, CTC, we actually don't have to include a blank, uh, and uh, we can actually provide uh, the speech recognition uh, based on this the uh, the architecture. So well, not sure that is working, but at least theoretically this one should also make a speech recognition. And uh, another uh, the architecture that really I came up with is this one. Uh, so the, I didn't fully emphasize, but the, another uh, important difference of the HMM and the CTC, if you remember, is that HMM, I actually explained that we usually put the silence at uh, the beginning and the silence end, or well, even sometimes actually putting a short pause between the word and so on. However, CTC, actually, this uh, the function was uh, the, the, uh, conducted by the blank symbol, but the blank symbol also has a meaning of, for example, the repeating the same token or uh, using the blank token. So it's blank can also be behaved as a duration part. And the blank also is be, uh, the, the important role to uh, make a distinction between the conjective characters, right? So blank actually has uh, three roles. One would be possibly silence, the other would be a duration model, and the third would be a kind of repetition, uh, the distinction of the repetition and so on. So uh, the which is maybe good, you know, just one symbol to do this kind of three roles, but sometimes actually silence is also very important information, but the CTC actually cannot well model the silence. We cannot interpret the silence actually after the, we get the blank and so on. So then that the, I came up with a new architecture, which is you know, starting from silence beginning. And then we always have a uh, the short pause. So if this is a this is a example is a character, but this uh, the token is like a word and so on, it's possibly uh, the, 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 uh, the short pause can be inserted, right? But short pause cannot be inserted. So that's why it actually can be skipped. And then uh, the, we also have our uh, the the Blank symbol uh, we have to include because otherwise we we might not uh, the, the distinguish uh, this one and the, this one and so on. So this may also be uh, another possible uh, the, the way to kind of realize speech recognition, I believe. And I just want to mention is that uh, again, CTC, this kind of structure is very cool, uh, very kind of well designed. Uh, but it would not be the one kind of uh, the, 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 the perfect answer. Probably we may explore more uh, about the, uh, the, the, this kind of topology uh, of the, the uh, network. This is actually not so much studied recently. People just, let's say, using CTC uh, and so on. So I actually want to revisit this part, especially I'm very interested in silence part. Uh, which is not well kind of explicitly modeled in CTC. But anyway, this is just a kind of side, side or not. Okay, so uh, the last comment uh, about the CTC, actually the, uh, the, the uh, Professor uh, Viksha Raj's course, the, uh, the introduction to deep learning is very, very good. I, I also, by the way, watched the, 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 his YouTube video. Even I want to actually attend his uh, the lecture, which will be in the next week. <laughs> uh, no, week after next. No, no. Uh, the, it's after the, uh, the fall break. <laughs> but unfortunately, I will be the, the, uh, not available. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, the, if you guys are taking this course, I uh, the, definitely recommend you to check this course. And you guys can also get the, uh, the, the information from the YouTube uh, and so on. I think that this is the most kind of uh, the, uh, the concise, uh, the, the complete uh, the, the explanation about CTC, I would say. And the, I also kind of often differ uh, the original uh, the paper uh, the, from the, uh, the graves. Okay, so now uh, the, the completely changing the topic. And then uh, the, the try to kind of uh, the finish the language modeling part. Uh, so because uh, the, we first starting from the each component, uh, right? Uh, the, uh, uh, 
feature extraction, acoustic modeling, lexicon, language model. And then we express uh, the, the, uh, the discussed about the feature extraction. And we spend a lot of time for the acoustic modeling. And then uh, the, we also kind of a uh, the little bit uh, the, the move to the CTC features end to end. Uh, but we actually didn't explain about the uh, language modeling part. By the way, lexicon part, uh, as I mentioned in the at uh, the beginning, uh, it's basically just using a dictionary. So in this lecture, I kind of skip the uh, detailed explanation and so on. But anyway, the, now that uh, the, the final component that I didn't uh, fully explain is language modeling. And then I want to explain it first with the classical uh, manner, and then later uh, that we will uh, the use the uh, neural uh, the based approaches and so on. But uh, probably some of you might kind of uh, the, the forget this kind of structure. So I just have uh, several slides to uh, review <laughs> the, the, the old component. First speech recognition, you know, and this is also good to review for the uh, two other the, uh, the uh, midterm exams, <laughs> just a little bit. So first, you know, speech recognition always starting from PW given O, and the CTC is directly uh, the, the, uh, tackling this one, but the HMM-based approach is basically kind of uh, the composed the three uh, the part. Uh, and then uh, the, we spend a lot of time to just uh, the explain about this uh, the acoustic modeling part. Uh, and then we're using the HMM, GMM, and then uh, the, the finally kind of uh, the providing the Baumwelch algorithm or beta B algorithm uh, and so on. That was the kind of uh, the, uh, the, our lecture uh, in the last week. And then this week, we kind of uh, the discuss about the CTC and so on. But basically, uh, the, the, uh, we are uh, working on this kind of acoustic modeling part. And then the, the uh, lexicon part is uh, the, we simply uh, the, uh, using the existing uh, the, the pronunciation dictionary. And then uh, we also uh, often use the CMU uh, pronunciation uh, dictionary to uh, the, the deal with this kind of problem uh, and so on. But today, uh, uh, I will also be focused on this one because it, possibly it could be our uh, midterm exam part. <laughs> okay. Then uh, the, uh, I will uh, the explain about the uh, language modeling part. For this uh, language modeling part, uh, I actually uh, the, the, uh, the refer to the, this paper, an um, empirical study of smoothing technique for uh, language modeling. This is also a very famous uh, review paper for language model, and I basically follow this paper uh, and so on. And as you can see, uh, this is also from CMU. So many of techniques are from CMU. And many of the uh, good papers are also from CMU. OK, so uh, the language model, uh, nowadays, uh, the, it's super kind of our, uh, the exciting approaches happens, right? But unfortunately, within this lecture, within this kind of our, today's course, it is not like a fancy language model. It's still kind of a classical language model. But I, uh, which is uh, still important, so I want to explain uh, with some word. So uh, the language model is to kind of get the, uh, the, uh, the prior probability of the word sequence. Again, the, uh, the, yeah, it's actually prior probability. Uh, the originally language model is used as a prior probability for speech recognition or machine translation. But now language model itself becomes a kind of a main model. So I feel that you know uh, the, the the model, the use of the model application could be changed depending on the uh, the uh, time. I really feel like that. Yeah, used to be language model is actually such kind of topic. But anyway, this kind of sentence itself uh, to be uh, the model is not easy. And then what I usually uh, what we usually kind of solve this problem is that we actually are the, the taking this as a, uh, the consider it as a sequence, and then uh, the, the factorize uh, this, uh, the, uh, the uh, probability uh, by using the uh, rule. So can you answer this part? Yeah, it can be also called the product probabilistic chain rule, but uh, this one is a part of the rule. 
even large language model, this kind of probability, uh, the, the uh, processing is very important. So uh, the, please remember it. Okay, again, the, the uh, how to deal with est uh, this estimation is very important. And then first part of this lecture, I will use the kind of a technique called n-gram. And then uh, the second part, which is uh, the probably after the fall break, and then also the, the go through some neural network, and then we'll kind of repeat it here again. Uh, in this case, we use a neural network. Okay, so n-gram is actually uh, uh, the very kind of similar concept that we have used for the hidden Markov model. We actually are, the con are using the uh, Markov assumption in this condition. So for example, this one, uh, one to i minus one, right? So this means that this is a subsequence. And then if the sentence becomes very long, and then condition also becomes very long, and it is very difficult to actually estimate this probability. So n-gram is at a very uh, intuitive. We just forget. <laughs> we just forget the history, <laughs> which is okay for the uh, some of the application, especially speech recognition. And uh, how many words we usually keep in the speech recognition? Do you guys know that? Only three or four, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that is enough uh, for speech recognition because speech recognition is more like to uh, the uh, transcribe the kind of uh, what we are talking, right? Of course, that uh, the language model semantic information is very helpful, but uh, at the same time, we want to kind of uh, the, the straightforwardly convert what we have saying. We actually don't need so much important contextual information and so on, semantic information and so on. So that's why we actually using a two to three or three to four uh, the, the, the uh, history uh, for the, uh, the language model. And that is actually quite enough for many of the speech recognition application. However, of course, uh, the, the everyone may know this assumption is not actually correct, right? Uh, these are uh, the two sentences. I want to go to the CMU campus and the doc want to go to the CMU campus. The second one, very nonsense, right? But uh, the, the, if we only you know, consider the history of you know, until two or three, we go to this area, the, this compute, uh, the, uh, the probability and this probability is actually the same, <laughs> regardless of whether we have you know, this kind of very important distinction and so on. So yeah, n-gram is not perfect, but just kind of consider the local context, it is uh, the, the very uh, the powerful. And then another part of the nice, uh, the another kind of good part of the, uh, the n-gram is that uh, we can easily solve it with a maximum likelihood uh, estimation. And uh, I just kind of are uh, taking the, uh, the, the equation here but uh, it is actually uh, the, the, uh, the first, the math is also not so difficult, uh, but the more interesting part is that the solution is very intuitive. Actually, the uh, maximum likelihood solution uh, of this kind of probability is that just a ratio of the count. More word would be more likely happen. So this is a kind of a maximum likelihood uh, uh, n-gram uh, solution. And this is again just kind of sweeping the entire corpus and just kind of count, uh, the, the getting the count of the, the word or the, the, uh, the in the n-gram cases, we may consider kind of a, a combination of the two words and so on. So it's a little bit complicated, but still just kind of a, uh, the sweeping the data, accumulating the count, and then uh, taking the ratio. Uh, this becomes a probability. So it is very intuitive, right? So I can give you some example. So in this example, I will use the uh, unigram, which is the, the most kind of uh, the ap approximated method. It actually doesn't consider any history, uh, just kind of consider the, the, the word itself. 
And then uh, the, uh, let's add a count. Let's, for, for example, training data is only this one. <laughs> Usually, of course, it can be the million or billion sentences, but they just consider only this one is the, uh, the training data. And then uh, let's do the maximum likelihood estimation. How to do that? We just kind of are uh, the, uh, count, uh, the computer the count of how often each word appeared in this sentence, right? And actually, only two TO are uh, appeared twice, and then others are uh, only appeared once. So it is a kind of intuitive, right? Because again, this TO often happens. So it can have a more higher priority, uh, probability. It's a kind of uh, uh, makes sense uh, in terms of the uh, this uh, the, the, the approximation and so on. However, it, it is too. Uh, the too much approximation, right? Don't even this other uh, unigram doesn't consider any history and so on. And then what happens is that uh, even switch the order of the sequence, since they don't have uh, the uh, the history information, actually the probability becomes equal. So uh, the for example, uh, the want to go I two and want to go. Uh, the, the, uh, I want to go to, I want to, uh, the, uh, want to go I to, and I want to go to, becomes the same probability. It is very kind of weird, right? But this one is actually simply solved by uh, consider the history. And then we actually started to get some kind of order. It's still not perfect. It's still kind of, you know, have some, uh, the, the, uh, the, the issues, but if we consider the longer history and so on, uh, this kind of appro approximation is uh, the more kind of uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the precise, and then the, the, it's getting the better and the better. And then bigram cases, uh, the still kind of uh, the maximum likelihood estimation is very simple. So bigram cases, uh, we have to have a kind of uh, the consider the, uh, the uh, two consecutive uh, the word, uh, the other kind of other uh, uh, unit, uh, and then uh, the count is actually represented by this. So uh, the if uh, the the, uh, the two pairs of the word, uh, consecutive two pairs of the word happens, and then we just kind of checking the count, uh, and then uh, the taking the uh, the the, uh, the the normalizing it with a probability. And it becomes the, the bigram probability. A trigram, uh, the foregram, basically same, and so on. And then the, we may think that, oh, then the, if we make it that, for example, thousand gram and so on, we can, you know, even uh, the, the, the consider the entire sentence, right? But it's actually not so easy to uh, the, make this kind of uh, the, the part to be uh, extended. So one of the big issues is the zero count program. So this is a one example, uh, but anyway, the again, if the training data is only this one, and then uh, the count, combination of the count is very sparse, right? Almost all part is zero, actually. Almost all part is zero. And then let's take the maximum likelihood estimation. This means that these kind of probability is completely zero. This means that the go I or the, the, uh, the when I kind of slightly change the kind of sentence from I want to go to my office to I go to my office, then this uh, bigram doesn't exist. Probability becomes zero. Speech recognition actually doesn't output this sentence. So the, the more kind of a context is actually uh, the making a list of uh, the, 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 uh, the making the probability estimation are uh, the very bad. And the even zero count is, it means that it doesn't appear at all. So we should uh, avoid this kind of other uh, issues and so on. Okay, then uh, the how to deal with this kind of problem. People are actually uh, the, uh, the proposing the, uh, several techniques. And this are uh, the, uh, the uh, 
uh, techniques of avoiding the zero probability is called smoothing. So language model, uh, especially in the n-gram based model, smoothing is a very important concept. So without smoothing, actually it was not working. So uh, I will explain about uh, uh, three uh, smoothing techniques uh, in this lecture. Oh. Oh. I have 20 minutes, right? But uh, the, I also need to explain about the weekly assignment. Okay, uh, let me try. Um, so first, uh, the, the smoothing method, the most simple smoothing method is to actually, anyway, add something. Uh, even this is the count zero, so we want to avoid zero. So we just kind of add something. And then we at least avoiding the zero. So this other method is called additive smoothing or Laplace smoothing and so on. And uh, this one, of course, you know, if the uh, this uh, the, uh, the is a kind of, a, let's say, hyperparameter, if this uh, the, uh, part becomes zero, it's uh, exactly maximum likelihood. And if this one is, by the way, very large, and then adding this one means that uh, adding this kind of account to all the kind of vocabulary and so on. So this means that uh, this, if this kind of alpha becomes very large, the uh, the it becomes equal probability uh, across the vocabulary uh, and so on. It's not very bad. And then just tuning this part, and then at least we can avoid zero probability, and very simply uh, avoid the, uh, the that language model uh, and so on. But uh, this is actually quite uh, the, the uh, we can just avoid the zero probability, but it usually doesn't uh, the powerfully working. Instead, uh, uh, the, I think this is the most practical first uh, the uh, the smoothing method is that uh, let's, for example, uh, compute the bigram uh, maximum likelihood. However, we also kind of uh, linearly interpolate the unigram. As you could imagine, unigram actually doesn't have a zero count problem. Bigram has a zero count problem. So if the, the bigram has a zero count issue, and then we're just using the unigram probability. We just kind of are removing the history. It's a quite kind of reasonable assumption. And this lambda is control the parameter. By the way, this can be also used higher n. Again, for example, this part is trigram, and this part can be bigram, uh, and so on. More uh, the, the, uh, the context, and then the, the data becomes uh, the, the more sparse. And then using the other uh, uh, the uh, the 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 lower n uh, gram, and then other uh, smoothing it is actually quite reasonable. So this is actually uh, the the uh, the, uh, the initially uh, the used uh, the, the the language model uh, technique. And then uh, there are several other uh, language model uh, technique and so on. And then today I will also explain about uh, the Nezanai smoothing. Okay. By the way, the uh, some people may notice um, smoothing technique are uh, actually usually uh, the named by the human's name. So Jelinek, Martha, they actually both working at the, the IBM and then uh, uh, propose these approaches. And they are uh, with them, Bell. These are also two person names and the smoothing. And the Neza 9 uh, is also two people's other uh, name. So if you want to be famous, uh, <laughs> the, my suggestion is working on a smoothing technique. But in this case, uh, you should only ask the one person, to, <laughs> up, to, up to two <laughs> people. <laughs> And then your name and your co-author's name can be, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, become a kind of, uh, the, the, this kind of uh, the techniques uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the, the algorithm. So it's 
the I don't know smoothing also comes from the, the information theory and so on. It's uh, the such kind of culture may happen, but usually computer science we don't use the human's name as an algorithm, right? So again, uh, if you want, you can try that. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, I will uh, do my best to uh, explain the uh, netherite smoothing. So netherite smoothing is actually interesting. Uh, the, it is actually opposite. Uh, we actually are the, the taking the, uh, the removing the count uh, instead of adding the count, uh, which may actually uh, they, they increase the kind of risk uh, of the uh, the of the zero count, but we usually actually, how to say, making this kind of a condition, if you know a denominator is uh, the, the, uh, the less than zero, and then it's we just using the zero, and then this uh, the smoothing part is just becomes a kind of probability and so on. So, but uh, this uh, the approach is first discounting the, uh, the, the probability and this other uh, discounting is actually quite reasonable uh, because the, the many of actually training data is biased and having actually more data than uh, that we expected for specific some kind of uh, counting issues. So uh, the, my, the, the uh, discounting it is actually uh, the making this kind of biased data to be mitigated. So this first part is taking the discounting. Uh, by the way, this other uh, the, the uh, 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 the lambda part is and the delta part is related. And then second term is the most important part. Uh, the previously uh, in, in the genetic mass smoothing, we actually using the bigram and then uh, the interpolated by the unigram. But the second part is actually instead of using the unigram, we use a very other uh, special other uh, uh, the, the smoothing uh, the probability. So which I will try to explain it. So this is actually quite a famous problem uh, called the the the, uh, the San Francisco uh, the, uh, problem. So let's say uh, for example the uh, the we this. Uh, word are uh, not uh, appeared in our training data. And then uh, the, we need a smoothing technique to uh, the infer this probability. That is our problem and so on. But anyway, do you think which one is more uh, the likely occurred? Leading glasses and leading Francisco. The obvious, leading glasses, right? Yeah, however, if we do the unigram smoothing, what's happened? Actually, San Francisco is quite largely hit uh, the, in the training data, uh, more than the grasses, unfortunately. So if using the, for example, the, uh, the unigram, other are uh, the, the smoothing techniques, and then Francisco, would be actually selected, which is wrong, right? And then the uh, actually uh, we want to avoid uh, this kind of smoothing and so on. By the way, uh, why Francisco so often happens? San Francisco, yes, exactly. So actually, uh, the this the, the among the three uh, three thousand. Over the uh, the ninety percent uh, is about San Francisco. <laughs> so, uh, due to this kind of uh, issue in the count, uh, if we using the uni unigram, uh, the San Francisco, uh, sorry, uh, the leading Francisco would be getting the higher probability. So we should avoid it. We should try to kind of uh, uh, the, the find a better another way to. Uh, the, the makes uh, the, the, the make a probability and so on. And then, as I mentioned, San Francisco is quite kind of a uh, the limited uh, the pair. Uh, mostly the, the before the Francisco, 
would be sun or some other mist hour, it's very limited. While grasses may have a lot of actually uh, the variations in the kind of a context and so on. So this can be more likely, right? So instead of checking the count in the Netherlands smoothing, we actually just checking the how many variation before this kind of a award and so on. Again, Francisco, it, it can be sun or mist or very few. Uh, and then the grasses, it can be colored falling words. It's quite actually many. And I actually counted this one in the one of the other uh, the, the corpus. Uh, the Francisco's variation is 58. Uh, may have, you know, this, uh, the, the uh, prefix, uh, the, the, not prefix, it's the, the uh, previous uh, the, the, uh, token variation can be 58. <laughs> By the way, I saw that it's very small, <laughs> but it's actually more than I expected. Uh, but still, you know, grasses is more, right? 80 to 8, a variation happens. So let's use this one as a probability. We just kind of the ignore the count and then just kind of using the variation uh, of the context as a probability. Uh, that is a, a nether nice smoothing. So by the way, I want to emphasize that this one is only for the smoothing part. It is kind of based on the variations, but the original part, if we have a more count and so on, uh, we're just using the, uh, the normal n-gram. So uh, by combining this kind of uh, two other uh, approaches, uh, we can actually uh, the, 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 uh, accurately uh, the, the, uh, providing the uh, probability uh, in, the, uh, the, uh, in the case that the, if we don't have uh, the sufficient uh, the data and so on. Of course, that if we have a tons of the data, we don't need so much smoothing and so on. So it's a more like a kind of balance of the issue. And lastly, uh, the, I will also explain about how to kind of evaluate the language model. Of course, one direction would be to use the speech recognition, first estimate the language model, and then combine it with the speech recognition, and then evaluating the word error and so on. This is more kind of our intuitive ways, uh, more kind of our uh, the, the, uh, the application oriented evaluation. But uh, this is actually having some cost. Speech recognition is actually at a more computationally expensive than language model. So instead, uh, people are using the perplexity. Here, this is actually quite simple. First, we get a kind of model, uh, the estimator model and so on. And the slow, the computing the actually likelihood. And then if this, the likelihood is higher, this means that this kind of a model can well uh, the, the, the represent the test data, right? So this uh, the perplexity is quite often used uh, as uh, the, the measure to evaluate the uh, language model. And then let's check the kind of performance of the, uh, the, the smoothing method and the other uh, n-gram method and so on. So, Additive smoothing is the one that I mentioned, just kind of adding uh, the alpha to the, uh, the numerator and the denominator, and the alpha is a kind of tuning parameter. Uh, and then please check uh, the, the, uh, the two to three. Actually, it's a, uh, the reasonable improvement in terms of the perplexity. Uh, that 10% uh, of the perplexity is improved. But actually, uh, high, more. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the context, it doesn't improve the performance. Move to the Netherlands smoothing. It actually have a quite significant improvement in terms of publicity uh, the, compared with the additive. And it's actually also having a very good improvement from two to three, but three to four is marginal. So even we have more context, we actually have a more kind of issue in the zero or lower count probability, smoothing happens, approximation happens. So unless we, uh, that we have infinite data, actually that uh, this uh, the n-gram based approaches cannot be well scaled to the, uh, the large n. But uh, again, this is actually uh, the important uh, for speech recognition because for speech recognition, local context is important. Uh, 
And I'm uh, the, the, yes, the, nowadays, a lot of neural language models are used and so on. But still, uh, the n-gram is also used in speech recognition. And uh, there is a kind of big uh, the reason. One is that, anyway, this model is too simple so that we don't have a kind of a bias or hallucination and so on, which is quite kind of a uh, the difficult issue in the large language model and so on. We don't want to change our kind of, you know, the speech recognition result to be uh, the, the replaced with some large language model and a completely different sentence, right? So uh, this kind of part is actually actively studied. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, this can be uh, uh, the, the, the one of the important uh, uh, research uh, the problems uh, now. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the, the uh, engram uh, is uh, with a smoothing technique, it is kind of still used for many of the speech recognition system. Uh, that is for this other uh, lecture part. Any questions?